Well, there, you look, hey, I finally got the lighting angle right. You see, I'm balanced. I got, you know, I got the regular, you know, one of those LED soft white bulbs over there, you know, lamp points up. I got my really cool, you know what I'm saying, Monavi, right, LED light, you know what I'm saying, up here, right, and then I got the ambient light coming through, right, as you can see, this, this, you know, this black with different colors on its heart is upside down. When the red put it on, you, you know, couldn't figure out which way it was up. <laughs> but anyways, I finally got the light balance. I think I think it got pretty good right here. Let's see this. Let's move it this way a little bit. Anyway, so, since I've been dealing with a lot of stuff lately, I figured, you know, I might talk about it. All right, and see if I can get some of it out and Sam. And, and, and get a reaction for some of you guys, see if some of you guys, you know, uh, you have, what you think, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I'm not looking, you know, I'm not looking to analyze, you know, anything or anybody or anything else, I'm saying, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are gonna make a lot of jokes, right, I'm saying, right, because, you know, hey, it is what it is. But anyways, right, um, I personally think, right, that the whole thing revolves around stability. Right, or the lack of stability, instability, right? You know, I'm, I mean, I'm in this program based on the fact, simple fact that I have to pay. I mean, it's a good program, it really is. I'm saying it's, it's focused, right? It, it helps, you know, a, min a, a minority of, of people coming out of prison, right? That gives us, you know, a semblance of stability, right? That we can work through and then we can build into our own personal stability. Now, now there, since I've been here a couple, three months, there have been, you know, a few guys that have worked all the way through it and they're back, integrated back into the real world. You know, they got a car, they got a job, they got their own place, you know what I'm saying? They're doing good, you know what I'm saying? You know, a couple of them got girlfriends back, you know what I'm saying? They reconnected with their families, right? They're doing good, you know, they still come around, you know, see, there's still a couple guys here, you know what I'm saying? You know, that they know, that they hang out with, that they hung out with on the yard, you know what I'm saying? That they, you know, that they, you know, they consider friends, partners, road dogs, you know what I'm saying? That they, you know, deal with and they, they talk to them and saying, and you know, how it, you know, how it worked out, how, you know, how it's going and stuff, you know, stuff like that, right? So that, that, you know, here, that's the unconscious goal here. That's what everybody, everybody's working towards that, looking at that, you know what I'm saying? And that's just the way it's going, you know, like, and we have, you know, there's a few guys here in this house that have been here for, you know, a while, over six months, you know what I'm saying? They have, you know, had the same job or, or at least, you know, one or two jobs. And they have money saved and they're working towards it, you know what I'm saying? And, and they still have a few months left on parole, right? But they're, you know, they're probably going to, you know, do good once they get off parole and go, you know, and do whatever they're going to do. Uh, like our house manager, Justin, he's from up north. He's probably going to go back home you know and hang out with his family because, you know, his family owns a sawmill and all that stuff up north. And, and, you know, they're, you know, they're upper, you know, middle class, right? And, and Justin's got a lot of money saved and he's doing good. He's a good guy, you know what I'm saying? He's a little, you know, cowboy dude. He's pretty, pretty, pretty buffed up. He's really mellow. He's really easy going. Right, he's really smart. He's, he, he's a good choice for the house manager here. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, and but but we got some new guys, you know, a couple, two, three new guys now, right, that are fresh off, you know, fresh off the yard. Right? They, you know, one of them is, was locked up for a long time, 22 years, and he is extremely institutionalized, right? So um, basically what he does most of the day is just sit there and watch TV, you know what I'm saying? And that's about it, you know, because he, he, that's all he did. You know, institutionalization is has many forms and, and, and it rears its head in, in many different ways, right? And, and homie, and no one's mad at him because, because we all recognize it. We all see it. We all know what, you know, what's going on with him, right? Because we've all experienced different forms of it ourselves. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, depression. You know what I'm saying? It has different forms and different layers, you know what I'm saying? And it works certain ways. Well, this individual, right, he's a good guy. He really is. He's a big heart, you know what I'm saying? He's helpful, you know what I'm saying? You ask him to help you do something, he's right in it. You ask him to do the dishes, he's right on it because he needs that structure. He needs somebody telling him what to do, 
right, in order for him to function. Because because otherwise he just sits. You know, otherwise he's like he's doing time. Stares at the TV. I mean, he watches Grit, the Grit channel on TV. I mean, we have basic cable, but he watches the Cowboys, the Cowboy channel all the time, always. John Wayne, you know, Glenn Ford. I mean, you know, right. I mean, you know, we can watch the Rock Hudson movie last night. You know, I'm going to save that one, but anyways. Right, and, you know, that's what he does. I mean, he got a phone the other day, right? The PO let him get a phone the other day. So, you know, he got one of those little basic Walmart, you know, pay-as-you-go, straight-talk things. And I helped him set it up, you know saying, so he doesn't, you know, end up with some bad stuff. And I showed him how to use it a little bit so he doesn't do anything bad, you know saying, right? And uh, he's been spending his time the last few days, a week or so, Right, reconnecting with his family, calling his family members, talking to them, talking it out. Right, you know, saying last night he spent you know a couple three hours talking with an old girlfriend that still lives you know back in the hood over here on the west side, you know, saying, and saying and telling more stories and stuff like that. He's still pretty much stuck twenty two years ago. You know, I, I mean he hasn't he hasn't because because he's you know been locked up so long because he's fresh off the you know. Right, the the lady that runs this program, she she has this thing called blackout. It's like two weeks. You know, so when you first get out, right, you you you're confined. You're not confined. You're restricted to the house. You know, saying until you know they figure out what to do with you. And if you want to go, like if he wants to go with care or something, one of us that's been here for a while has to go with him. You know, saying kind of like chaperone him a little bit, make sure he doesn't you know get into trouble. You know, make sure that he integrates well. He you know he he has good interaction skills with people at the stores and stuff, you know what I'm saying? He's a pretty good guy. I mean, he's pretty smart, you know what I'm saying? But he just has 22 years under his belt, and, and that that leads into his institutionalization, right? And it's, and it's sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's weird, sometimes it's, you know, a little off, right? Because he does, you know, weird little things, and weird little things trigger him, you know? Like, Oh man, I mean, like, like a couple of nights ago, uh, somebody cooking a soup and left their bowl and their spoon in the sink. Instead of rinsing it out, washing it out, and putting it on the thing, you know, like, you know, like you're supposed to, they just kind of like put it in the sink, walked away, and then do kind of nutted up and, you know, saying, went off a little bit, you know, saying, and Justin had to get involved, and it was all over a spoon in a bowl, right? But see, that's, that's, the mentality, that's the mindset, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it, prison is all about respect, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and if you don't show any or you don't show enough, right, some people get irate, you know what I'm saying? And, and because, because they, 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 two things happen, they take it as a personal front to them and their respect, you know, I'm giving you respect, why can't you respect me back? And number two, because it's a general, generalized thing about, hey man, you're supposed to know what the fuck, you know what I'm saying, dude, you're supposed to have respect for yourself and fucking handle your business, right? And, and people that have been locked up for a long time, this is ingrained into their psyche, right? And and it messes with them, right? And, and it takes, you know, it takes some of us older people, some of us older guys, you know what I'm saying, that, that have been in and out, in and out, and saying that have dealt with it and know and recognize the behavior patterns to kind of settle them down a little bit and explain to them, look, bro, you know what I'm saying, not everybody understands, you know what I'm saying, because, because the person that, that committed this offense in his mind, right, had only done, you know, a little over a year in prison, and they, you know, they, they really didn't catch the flow of it, he's a young guy, right, and youngsters, young guys don't really catch, get into it until they get beat up at least once, you know what I'm saying, or they find themselves in a situation where they, you know, where, it, <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, right, but anyways, you know what I'm saying, but I, I just, you know, this is just a snapshot of how it, how it works and how, you know, different people, right, you know, deal and relate with, with free life again, right, out here in the open, right, you know, I mean, he'll, he'll, he won't never get past it, he'll never, you know, he will always be institutionalized at some point and for the rest of his life. Right, and uh, but but once he integrates back, once once he's done with this program and he gets his social security going and all that, because he's you know he's about my age, right? And uh, if he, he integrates back into his family, because it, it it appears it it's appearing that his family's you know setting up to get ready to take him back, 
once he's you know done with this pro, he's only got a few more weeks, you know, a couple to go, right? And uh, then and he he will probably most likely be all right. He'll never probably ever get arrested or get in trouble again. You know what I'm saying? Unless he you know gets hooked on drugs or something over in the hood, which is you know there is a high potential for that. Because he doesn't do anything. I mean, all he does is sit around. You know what I'm saying? And that that that's a breeding ground for nothing to do but get high, and drink, and you know, so goof around, and get mixed up with the you know, the youngsters and the hood rats and all that stuff. And that's you know the the biggest the biggest leading contributing factor to going back is getting involved with the bad people that you should stay away from. But anyways, this is me, Brian. Just you know. Trying to you know help you guys out to understand some of the mindset and some some of the you know the things that we you know that you, that you will deal with once you get out of prison if you accidentally end up going. Thank you.